We're getting ready for our wedding preparation day here in the Saffron Walden and Villages team. And in a few weeks time, we're going to be welcoming 16 couples into St. Mary's Church. They're all going to be getting married in one of our church buildings across the team sometime in 2024. I'm sure they're all already very busy planning their weddings. And we want to ensure that not only does the day go well, but that the beginning of their married lives is underpinned by some strong foundations. Throughout the world, a wedding is a time of celebration, shared food and drink, community rejoicing and family bonding. In many traditions, the couple's community and families are, are much more than mere bystanders to the events of the day, but active participants in the ceremony, there to witness and bless a, a new state that the couple are entering into. Indeed, in our marriage services, after the couple have given their consent, the congregation are asked a question as part of the service. Will you, family and friends of whoever, support and uphold them in their marriage now and in the years to come? The response is meant to be, we will, though sometimes it's a bit lacklustre and it needs repeating. I ask them to repeat it with a bit more enthusiasm. After all, Every couple will need the support of family and friends at some point in their married life. Without that support, the blessing of friends and family, a marriage is a much more difficult path. Families and friends can't make a marriage, but by their neglect, they can do a lot to destroy it. So getting their consent to support and uphold a couple in their marriage is vital. The blessing of such an occasion is therefore not just for the couple, but for all who are present. And that blessing comes through sharing hopes, prayers, songs, food, drink, laughter. Sharing those things helps overcome any animosity or bad feeling. It smooths the path to a new dynamic of relationship, not just between two people, but between their friends and their communities. At the moment, we're in the church's season of Epiphany. And the story we hear from John's Gospel today is one of the showings of who Jesus is. As the final verse explains, Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. John's Gospel doesn't recount the wise men's visit to the stable. Instead, we have this story of the first showing. John has taken the marriage theme and made it a sign of God's reasserted promises to humanity. Just two chapters later, Jesus will tell the story of the Samaritan woman at the well, a traditional place for couples to meet, and how an outcast woman is, is witness to the blessing of the water of eternal life. This theme of the marriage between God and the world is also there in our Gospel today. We can't see the bride in the story, she's not mentioned, perhaps because we are that bride, God's church, come to meet our bridegroom Jesus. There's the merest hint of this, although maybe it's enough to connect it to that wedding in Revelation between the Lamb of God and those who worship. The banquet in God's kingdom is an open invitation to all people, for the whole of creation. It's that place where enmity is over and sharing begins, where people who arrive as strangers depart as friends, where blessing is found in the most simple of things. Good food shared with love and good drink shared with delight. To picture God's banquet as a wedding feast invites us all to begin with a smile, a relaxation of the tension we often carry around with us and which leads us to dis-ease and disharmony between us and between our fellow human beings. Yet, in today's Gospel reading, Jesus appears to be uncertain as to whether the time is right to show what God's kingdom looks like. So his mother intervenes, and the blessing of, of wonderful wine for everyone is given. As this story shows, God is not mean with his blessing. The guests will have drunk quite a lot already, and now here is further abundance. Not a bottle or two that you or I might take to a party, but we're told over 800 bottles of wine, and it's the best stuff. Maybe not communion wine. 
When we meet to worship, we do so in a spirit of joyful celebration. Or is it actually a grudging display of piety? Is our sharing of God's abundance too limited in our lives and in our communities? Do we dare to make room for more people and share with them the spirit of delight and joy? Are we bold enough to let God's abundant blessing alight on whoever it will, rather than keep it simply for ourselves? This, I believe, is the challenge of the Gospel today. Here is God's banquet. There is more than enough for everyone and all are invited in. So let's make sure the doors are open.